As you're standing, take out your Bibles and turn to 1 Chronicles chapter 13. And we're going to begin reading in verse 1 through 4. 1 Chronicles chapter 13, verse 1 and 4. And as you turn there, uh, again, Anthony and Mercedes came up here and they uh, reminded us about the Fresh Wind Conference that's starting on Friday night. Uh, and again, remember, our whole goal for Fresh Wind is for our church. Now, there are others that are coming. I mean, we got pastors from Watsonville. We got pastors from uh, Salinas, all the way down to uh, Twin Cities, they call it. That's uh, over by Roseville. They're all coming in, Sacramento area, Bay Area. Reno is coming in. And so, you know, we're happy for that. But also, I would be happier if many of us would get registered too because, you know, it's, uh, it's for us, you know, for Victory Outreach Fremont. And so I know, you know, we got one more week left and, you know, bills need to be paid and things like that. But uh, also, let's, uh, let's invest that, okay? That, that, small, um, that small registration fee, I mean, come on, man. You go to McDonald's. It's like, it comes out to twice that registration fee. And so, you know, I think if we could, we could do that to keep our kids quiet sometimes, you know, uh, let's invest in ourselves. And that's what Fresh Wind is going to be. It's an encounter. It's not an event. It's an encounter. So, and then also we need help to volunteer. We should be hosting this. We have it, you know. Uh, hey, I registered. I'm preaching. And I registered. And let me just throw this out to you. I'm not getting no honorarium that day. So I'm giving. I registered. Come on, I got to register my wife, though. She's all, why are you registered and I'm not? I'll get you, girl. I'll get you, girl. I'll get you. I registered. I'm speaking. So I'm serving. I registered. I'm just letting it all out. I don't care. So don't look at me sideways and say, well, you want me to register and serve? Yes, we do. Not only do I want you, I expect you to. It would be sad if we have to reach out to our region to help facilitate our event. Oh, Lord. I'm telling you, I'm on one. We're, we're days away, so I think you could shake a hand. You could seat somebody. That's not asking to do a lot. This is our house, and I think we should be here to good hospitality for our house. I don't care if you don't even know a scripture. Just smile and just say, John 3, 16. <laughs> Tonight, someone say tonight at 6 o'clock, we're going to be having our Branded by Fire prayer night. So, you know, I looked at the worship team, they looked at me and they go, what do we do? I go, I don't know. We're just going to be Branded by Fire tonight. We're going to just go with it. The lights will be off. We're going to be praying. You do not want to stay home and sleep on this one. I'm telling you right now, God is going to move tonight. I have a word. I don't know if I'll preach it, but I got a word. I'm ready. We have some prayer people that are going to come up and so that's tonight at 6, Branded by Fire prayer night as we get ready because tomorrow, Monday through Friday, we have a five-day fast preparing us. Get excited. It's okay, yeah. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Fast. You can have coffee. You can drink your little whatever you drink. But just from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., we're not eating. Come on, man. Some of us went weeks without eating before. And you know what I'm talking about, men's home. Yeah. So I think that's the least we could do is re-prepare for a fresh move on fresh wind uh, coming up. So let's do that together. There's power in unity. First Chronicles 13, 1 through 5. The Bible says, David talked to each of his officers, the commanders of thousands and the commander of hundreds. He then said to the whole assembly of Israel, if it seems good to you, and if it is the will of God, let us send word far and wide to rest uh, to the rest of our people throughout the territories of Israel, okay, and also the priests, the Levites who are in them in the towns of the pasture lands. I'm going somewhere here today. To come with us and join us. I'll explain that in a minute. He goes on to say, let us join, let us, let us, let us bring the ark of our God back to our house. Okay, I'm going to talk about that today. For we 
did not inquire of it during the reign of Saul, the whole assembly agreed to do this, and it seemed right with all the people. Real quick, go down to verse 7, okay, of the same chapter. Go down to verse 7. So they all agreed to go get the Ark of the Covenant back, which was the presence of God, bring it back, and now we pick it up. They're going after it. And the Bible says that they moved the Ark. They found it, okay? They moved the Ark of God from Abinadab's house, okay? So they went and found it, brought it back. Abinadab is David's brother. They brought it back on a new cart, fail number one, with Uzzah and Ahio guiding it, fail number two. David and all the Israelites were celebrating with all their might before God. That's kind of okay. With songs and with harps, lyres, trembles, cymbals, and trumpets. So in other words, it looked good on the outside, but they were actually doing the wrong thing. When they came to the threshing floor of Kidon, Uzzah reached out his hand to steady the ark because the oxen had stumbled. So it hit a speed bump and the ark was going to fall, so the guy reached out to stop it from hitting the ground. But the Lord was angry against Uzzah. And he struck him down because he had put his hand, my God, on the ark. Someone say, keep your hand off the presence. So he died before God. Almost done here. Then David was angry because the Lord's wrath had broken out against Uzzah. And, this, and to this day, that place is called Perez Uzzah. David was afraid of God that day. And he asked, how can I ever bring the ark of God back to me? So he did not take the ark with him to the city of David. Instead, he took it to the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. And the ark of God remained there while David went to figure this thing out. But the family of Obed-Edom, where the ark of the covenant rested for three months, the Lord blessed the house, his house and everything he had. Lord, bless your word. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. You can all be seated here this morning. It's a lot of scripture. But there's a method to the madness this morning. We're talking about revival, okay? And when we start talking about revival here in Victory Outreach Fremont, a lot of these messages can very well sound the same. They can sound very familiar. Uh, and, and that's good. I think they should because revival is not complicated. Revival is a lot of things, first and foremost, but one of the things revival is that I'm going to talk about today is you cannot have revival without God's presence. And in, in my title here, you see it, my title's called Bringing Back the Ark. Because for the Israelites, the Ark of the Covenant, which David was going to recover and bring back, meant simply God's presence. So what had happened was, is David had become king. But up until this point, he had only become king over half of Israel. And so when King Saul died, uh, David became king of all of Israel. So the other half of Israel came to David and they said, David, now that King Saul is dead, you know, we want you to lead us now. It was, it was, it was the plan of God all along. So as David is there, um, they begin to show King David around his new palace. They begin to show him, you know... Uh, the five-car garage, uh, his new chariots on 24s. They begin to show him his new robe. Come on, somebody. Here's a robe for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Come on, get in the spirit. Stay in the spirit. And they show David all of his blessings. They show David all the, his stuff. And David is thankful for it. David is grateful for it. He's thankful that he's receiving these, these things. And God's opening up doors for him. And God has elevated him now. And now he's walking into his calling. But David says, this is all great, but I have, I have one question. And the question that I have for the tour guide is, is I notice that there's something missing here in this palace. He says, I've walked all through this castle, if you will. I've seen the smallest closet, crevice of a closet to the biggest big screen TV that you have offered me here and everything in between. But I still see that there's something missing. And they say, well, David, what can possibly be missing? 
I mean, you have everything you want. And David says, no, I don't have everything I want. The very thing that I don't see here is I don't see the Ark of the Covenant. In other words, what David was saying is he was saying, I don't see the presence of God here. I don't have the presence of God here. I mean, this thing looks good on the outside. It has all the bells and whistles, if you will. I see all the smoke. I see all the cameras. I see all the lights. I see all the sound. I see all this. I see the chairs. I see, I see everything. But, 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 but what good is having all of that, David said, if I don't have the presence of God in my life? So David began his quest. David was on a quest, just like Victory Outreach Fremont is on a quest. If you don't know, now you know. We are on a quest. What are we on a quest for? We are on a quest for God's presence. What good is it to have a building if we don't have the presence? What good is it, come on somebody, for me to be restored and my family to be healed and my marriage to get better? Come on, talk to me a little bit today. Yeah, what good is it for me to have all of that? And I thank God for it. I appreciate it. I thank God for the wins in my life. I thank God for the victories in my life. I thank God for the men in the home and their families that are coming. I thank God that you're here today. I thank God you fought through the rain. Give yourself a hand today. Like, you're the kind of people I want to hang out with. Like, I like that about you, man. Come on, somebody. I like that about you. You're a fighter. You're not. Ooh, I probably ran the streets with some of you. But what good is all of that if we don't have the presence of God within our lives? See, I'm going to give you today three benefits, benefits of bringing the ark back into your life, okay, into your life. The number one benefit I have for us here today of bringing the ark of God, in other words, the presence of God back to your life or in your life maybe for the first time, is you will experience personal revival. Okay? Again, there's that familiar language again. Personal revival. Right? We've been talking about that. But don't, don't let that go over your head today. Don't, don't minimize what I just told you here today because, because I don't care who you are in this, in this, in this sanctuary. Uh, from me down to maybe the brand newest brother in the home uh, and everyone in between, we all need during this season a personal revival within our life. I'm telling you right now, that could be the very thing that is missing in your life. Yeah, without personal revival, all we are is a bunch of religious nuts. Our, all we are is people that look good on the outside. Come on, somebody. I'm tired of just looking good on the outside. I'm tired of looking the part. God didn't save me so I could just look the part. God didn't rescue my God-forbidden horrible life before Christ to just clean me up so I could look the part. Come on, somebody. Yeah, but God has put his, put, cleaned us up and got us saved and brought us here to church for a purpose. Someone say a purpose. <laughs> personal revival. Someone say personal revival. So in order for corporate revival to take place within our life, there must first be a personal revival. Personal revival comes to a person when they are tired, okay, of the same old, same old. Woo, is there anybody in this place today to be honest and say, I'm tired of the same old, same old. My God, I don't want to come to church again and just experience, you know, look at a crazy man up there preaching. And look at a crazy worship team up there trying to cheer me. To, I don't. There's got to be something more. I'm tired of religion. We're picking on religion. We pick on religion here. Ooh, Lord, I'm tired. How about this one of shallow Christianity? I'm tired of shallow Christianity. I'm tired. I'm tired of not feeling his presence. I'm tired of just surface type of stuff. Lord, have mercy. I'm tired of man-made religion. Oh, Lord, man-made religion didn't save me. Oh, he'll use man. 
He'll use me. He used Pastor Sonny and Sister Julie, the founders of this beautiful ministry in 1967, come on, to go after the drug addicts and the gang members. But this ministry did not, did not stay in a posture of just reaching drug addicts and gang members. Come on, somebody. Because when I got saved 25 years ago, my mom wasn't a drug addict. My mom wasn't a gang member. But she had me and she had my dad that were lost and bound. Come on, somebody. And when she walked into that church in Hayward, California... She had to experience revival for herself. And I thank God that the church embraced her. I thank God that we weren't just tailor-made for the drug addicts and the gang member. I thank God that there was a group. My God. I thank God there was a group of women that said, Hey, you look like you never broke a plate, sister. That they didn't just gravitate towards the rough ones, the the ruffians, and come on somebody, that there were some sophisticated sisters in the church that said, hey, I, I'm going to go, I'm going to go talk, because you, you know, you had to have guts to go talk to my mom. She's all nicey-nicey now, but 25 years ago, she was a little rough around the edges. Come on, somebody. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say, I'm trying to say a man-made religion didn't save us. But it was even before I stepped into that church, I was in that home, I felt the presence of God. We didn't have bunk beds that matched. We didn't have sheets that matched. I didn't even have a pillow. I came into the home with green shorts, a, a white, like, slingshot. And I had a 49er beanie. You knew I was lost. Green shorts and a red 49er. I look like a dang Christmas tree. <laughs> Christmas tree. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, that first morning, that first morning when those 35 to 40 men started clapping their hands and they started singing, Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning, 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 keep me burning to the break of day. I want to sing, I want to shout, I want to praise the Lord, and I never get the words, never praise the Lord. Hey, we didn't have a guitar, we didn't have a drummer, we didn't have a worship leader, but what we did have was we had the presence of Almighty God inside of that home. And, 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 and because our hearts were hungry, and because our hearts were desperate, it wasn't religion that saved me, but it was the very presence of God that fell upon that place. And I'm telling you right now, religion will never save you. Some of us came in here looking for religion. You'll never find it here. You're looking for the wrong plate. You're looking in the wrong place. Woo, come on, somebody. You need to get to a place of desperation, and you need to get to a place of repentance. That's what happened to David, my God. He noticed all the fancy stuff. He noticed the big army, the outer appearances of success, but it was missing the most important thing. It was missing the presence of God. Abinadab, who had this ark at his house, where David picked it up from, was actually David's older brother. And the ark had ended up at his house because the enemy originally had captured it. But they didn't want it no more because it was like a bad luck charm for them. The presence was in the wrong hands. And they kept having bad luck with it. So they said, we don't want it. Get rid of it. Well, where do we take it to? I don't know. Drop it off at the first house you see. And that's exactly what they did. They ended up dropping it off at Abinadab's house. Listen carefully. Commentaries say that this Ark of, Coven Ark of the Covenant was at Abinadab's house for roughly 20 years. During this 20 years, no one, not even King Saul, asked where it was. For 20 years, there was no honor of the ark. There was no godly fear of the ark. There was no godly worship happening in Israel. There was no tending. In other words, there was no devotion to the presence. They got used to doing 
church without the very presence of God. For 20 years, Abinadab and his family had the ark in their house. The, the, the very thing that God told Moses to build. Because it was going to represent his very presence. But as the ark was in his house, nothing was different about his house. No news of any blessings. No news of any breakthroughs. No news of any healings. No news of any restoration. No news of any financial breakthrough. Nothing. Someone say nothing. nothing. Why? I'll tell you why. Because to them, the presence of God had become ordinary. It had become common. You ain't hearing me today. It was part of the furnishings. It was no longer a priority within their life. Here, here's what it was. It was an option. It was like when you buy a new car. Do you want electric or, uh, I don't know, what can I afford? Do you want leather or do you want the other one? Yeah, that one. It was just an option. Do you want a CD player or do you want, like, that good radio? It was just an option. It, the presence was in his house with his family. The thing that was supposed to be a blessing, the thing that was rep supposed to represent the presence of God, actually there's no report of anything happening within his lives. Why? Because the sacred had become familiar. Lord have mercy. Never take God's presence for granted, my brothers and my sisters. Just because you're not seeing it with your eye or because you're not feeling it with your little goosebumps does not mean God is not at work. If you're only expecting to get goosebumps today and maybe cry a tear of some kind of alligator tear, if the, and, and if you don't, then you think God's not here. You're just looking for sensationalism. That's not, that's religion. I got to feel it. I want to touch it. I got to smell the presence. The Bible doesn't teach us to do that. Matter of fact, the, the Bible says in James 4, 8, you draw near to him, he'll draw near to you. If you come seeking me, he says, you seek me with all your mind, with all your heart, you're going to find me, he says. You have to purpose it in your heart that I want him at any cost. And I won't let the sacred things become common to me. It's no wonder David's brother Abinadab, who had it for 20 years, didn't become the king. He had no hunger for God. When they brought all the brothers in to anoint the next king, he was one of them. And the presence of God went right over him and went on to David. That's a whole other Bible study. But we need the ark. The benefit of the ark is because we need personal revival. I'm going to move a little faster here. Secondly, another benefit, and I, I, I hope you like this one. It's not a popular one, but, uh, you know, I hope you will appreciate it. Praise the Lord. Another benefit of bringing back the ark the ark is that God honors clean hands. Ooh, come on. Sanitize your hands has been the mantra right over the last three years. Wash your hands. Yeah, you should. Yeah. But how about washing your heart? <laughs> uh, you need to wash your heart too, man. Someone say, help me, Lord. Yeah, help me, Lord. On the way back with the ark, we read here in this portion of Scripture that the Bible says that the oxen had stumbled. And they basically hit a pothole, and Uzzah stuck out his hand to stop it from falling. And the Bible says that he instantly died. Jeremiah 25, 7 says, But you do not listen to me, declares the Lord, and you have aroused my anger with your hands. You have brought harm to yourselves, my God. Ooh, Lord, just help me out with an amen here and there, man, because I'm trying to help us out here today. Okay, I'm trying to help us out. Clean hands matter to God. Clean hands matter to God. See, something was wrong with Uzzah because something was wrong with his private life. I told you to help me. You don't want to help me. All right. I'm trying to help you. 
nasty, but God, God, God knew about it. David didn't know about it. The others didn't know about it, but God knew that Uzzah's hands were dirty. If one thing this pandemic has taught us, come on somebody, is that, you know, we have to be able to sanitize not only our hands, but also our hearts. Let me just say this because I wrote it down. I, I wrote it down. I wrote it down in cursive too, like not cursive, but big bold letter, like you know, when you're when you're angry. So I, I, I typed. I can read it from here. That's why right now, dirty hands people are not thriving during this season. It's okay. You're in church. I'm not here to beat you down. I'm here to kind of prod you and then heal you. This season has exposed what was really going on in private. Psalms 24, verse 3 and 4 says, Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord, and who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift his soul up to another with, the fa- with, with what is false and does not swear deceitfully. So I think, I think the point is clear today, yeah? yeah. Clean hands. Yeah, and you, you have a struggle like all of us have. Well, today's the day where we clean our hands. We clean our hearts. How many thank God for that? How many thank God that we're able to come to a place where we're not judged? We keep blowing it. We're bringing judgment on ourselves. But there's, there's still room. There's still time. There's still room for repentance. Someone say amen. Someone say thank you, Jesus. So we see number one is personal revival. That's why we need to bring the ark back. Number two is so we can get our hands clean, spiritually speaking. Number, f- uh, number three, excuse me, number three benefit of bringing back the ark is prosperity. Okay, so we know that David came to pick it up. The oxen stumbled. David goes, uh, you know, Uzzah's not with us no more. So I think I need to go rethink this thing back in Jerusalem. So let's not move it anymore. They look around and they say, just take it to that house right there. They take it to Obed-Edom's house. And they leave it there, the Bible says, for three months. And David goes back to Jerusalem, the city of David, to figure this thing out. And he begins to read the Old Testament. And he begins to see that he was the whole time bringing it wrong. He wasn't supposed to have oxen bringing it. He wasn't supposed to have certain men taking it. But there was a, there was a protocol that he was trying to figure out on how to, how to bring this thing back to Jerusalem. Meanwhile, the Bible says that they took the ark to Obed-Edom's house. And for three months, come on somebody, he had the ark of the covenant, Obed-Edom did, in his house. Now there's nothing significant about the man himself, Obed-Edom. Yet the Bible says that everything that surrounded him was blessed. Listen. It wasn't the ark being in his house that caused the blessing. Because remember, this same ark was in Abinadab's house for 20 years and there was nothing. But for three months in Obed-Edom's house and everything was blessed. How? Someone say how. How? Why? Someone say why. Because it wasn't the ark. It was the host. It wasn't the ark, it was the host. So in other words, I need the ark back in my life because because I know how to host the presence of God. Hey, I might not be the smartest person in the room. I may not be the most educated person in the room. I may not be the most, you know, good-looking person in the room. I may not be the most tallest person in the room. I may not have it all. You ain't hearing me today. I may not have it all together uh, uh, on the outside here. But one thing I do know is I know how to host the Holy Ghost. So bring in the presence of God. Bring it in my house. Back that puppy up. Beep, 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 beep. Back it on in here. I won't treat it like some un, like some some raggedy old furniture. I won't. I won't treat it like it's common and it doesn't matter. No, 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 no. You bring the bring 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 that puppy in here. Bring. I dare you. Bring that presence. 
of God in here. I'm hungry. I'm desperate. I want more. I'm tired of the same old, same old. My marriage needs healing. My kids need healing. My family needs healing. There's a... Because he knew how to host the Holy Ghost. My question is for you, my brothers and sisters, have you been a good host of the Holy Ghost? Because it's not his fault breakthroughs not happening in your house. It's not his fault the blessings aren't happening in your house. Oh, we love to blame God, don't we? Oh, we love to blame him. Blame it on the rain. God says, hey, just you're not being a good host. You only call me when you really need me. How about when things are going good? After you're healed. After the breakthrough. After the deliverance. After all the bills are paid. Oh, you were sure on your knees when you had nothing. Oh, you were sure on your knees when you needed that, that, that report to come back in your favor. You were sure on your knees when you needed your bills paid. You were, sh you were sure on your knees when you were waiting for that. When you were waiting for her to call you. Oh, call me, Lord. Lord, you bring, bring her back, Lord. Bring her back. Bring her back, 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 back. I promise I will serve you forever, ever, 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 ever. Oh, he brought her back all right. But where have you been since? Oh, God. you guys get what I'm saying. I'm trying to challenge you today. Because, because the days of superficial Christianity are out the window. I'm trying to help you that not only in the bad times, but how about in those good times? The Bible says for three months, for three months this guy had the presence of God in his house, and everything started shifting for him. You want things to shift in your life? You want things to shift in your house? Come on, somebody. Get rid of some of those idols out of your house. Get rid of some of those things in your life. Obed-Edom said, I am not satisfied with a visitation. But he said, I want a habitation. See the difference there? God does not want weekend visits from you. You know what he wants? He wants full custody. Notice that there wasn't anything Obed-Edom did to be chosen to host the presence of God. But there was things that he did to keep it. There would be nothing, or let me say, there should be nothing that we aren't willing to do to make God feel like an honored guest within our life. Remember this. You and I are not in his, uh, he is not in your presence. We are in his presence. We shouldn't want anything in our lives to repel him. But my question for us is, will we be worthy to host him? Oh, the Holy Spirit's sensitive. Oh, he's sensitive. He gets grieved real easy. He, like, you know, demands, not necessarily perfection. Don't let me lose you here, okay? Because some of you are like, oh, well, that just throws me out of the equation. No, 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 no. You know what he's, you know what he's drawn to? He's drawn to authenticity. So, yeah, I'm a hot mess today. At this moment, I'm a hot mess, God. But that's why I need you. That's why I need you. Clean up my mouth. Clean up my, God, I don't want to talk like this no more. Lord, help me. Help me not to be like that. Help me to have clean hands. See, 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 you can change. The presence of God can change you. Oh, I'm always going to just be like this. No, you're not. You're like that because you want to be like that. And there I go, being ghetto now. Yeah, you're like that because you want to be like that. You need to change. And so David comes to pick up the ark. I'm almost done. You come up, Carlos. Give him some hope. <laughs> David gets the, his act together, and he reads 
the Old Testament and he finds out, aha, I should have brought the ark back not on a cart, not with oxen, and not with filthy hands. I was supposed to. He says, oh, that's what those long wooden poles were for. I was supposed to put them on the side and the Levites were supposed to carry the ark on their shoulders. Oh, I see. That's what that was. That's okay. My bad. <laughs> My bad, Lord. The presence of God is to be carried with the utmost reverence and honor and respect. Some of us, we treat it so, you know, like, like I said earlier, just like an option. Only get it when I'm when I really, really, really need it. But the presence of God is not an option. It's a it's mandatory. And so David does his part. He comes back and he comes to pick up three months later the Ark of God and Obed Edom is like, what are you here for, man? No, don't tell me you're no, 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 no. Says I got to take it back, man. I got to get this thing back to the city of David. I got to get it back to Jerusalem, man. The people are waiting. We haven't had the presence of God for a long time. And okay, okay. And Obed Edom says, "Hold on, hold on." But you're not taking it without me. Read the story. Keep reading it. He says, "You're not taking it without me." As a matter of fact, me and my family have been waiting for this day because we didn't. We knew it was too good. It was too good. So we already packed our bags. And uh, do whatever they want to do with the house, but we're following the ark. Because since the presence of God has been in my life, my life has never been the same. I haven't went back to the lifestyle that God delivered me from. I haven't even desired to go back. God has taken things away from me that, 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 that no religion could have taken from me. And a matter of fact, God has been so good, not only to me, but he's been good to my family. And, and, and not only my marriage got better, but, but my children, he said, are better. And my children's children are now serving God. And the Bible says that Obed-Edom, when they went back to Jerusalem, his family for 72 generations served God in the temple. They were ushers. They were greeters. They were worshipers. They were priests. They took, uh, they were kids workers. They were youth workers. They were student workers. Come on, somebody. They were home directors. They were men's home directors. You ain't hearing me today. All because the presence of God came into their life. And here's my fourth point, but I'm just going to give it to you. You'll get your joy back. How many want your joy back? How many want your joy back? You got to get your joy back, my brother and my sister. Yeah, come on. Money will make you happy for a minute, but it will not give you the joy that really will sustain you. Money comes and money goes. Come on, somebody. Relationships come and relationships go. Listen. What you and I need is we need our joy back. See, if the devil can't get you to backslide, he'll just try to make you miserable. And some of us have been miserable in the house of God. And I'm here to tell you today, you need your joy back. How do you get your joy back? You got to get the presence of God back in your life. Oh, too long. We've gone without it. Stand up and lift up your hands. We've gone and looked it. Bring back the ark. So sorry. Victory Outreach Fremont, we're bringing back the ark. So sorry. Too long. We've tried to lock it. You're bringing it back. We've tried to box it. You need the presence of God, my no brother. No longer. My sister. We are. We're bringing back the ark. Bringing back the ark. We're not going to do church. We're not doing church anymore. Without the ark of God. Bringing back the ark. I'm not going to preach. Bringing back the ark. Without the presence of God. People of your presence. I'm not going to sing. Without the presence of God. 
we need you need we are people of your presence people of your presence and we are desperation Revival. You got to be a good host. We are and we are bringing back the ark. Bringing back the ark. We are people of your friends. to get the presence of God back in your life. It's time to surrender your life back to God. It's not the church. It's not Him. But it's us. We're the ones fighting the presence of God. We're the ones limiting God. But God says it's time to stop limiting me. It's time to stop fighting me. And it's time to surrender and get desperate and get God back into your life. These altars are open. These altars are open. These altars are open. Slip out of your seat. Get up here to the front. We are people of your presence. People of your presence. People of your presence. We love your presence. We love your presence. And we are bringing. We are bringing back the ark. Slip out of those seats. Time to get that presence back in your life. I'm trying to tell you. I need the presence. I need the presence. You need the presence. We are people of your presence. There you go. We are people of your presence. We are people of your presence. We are people of your presence. And we are people of your presence. Come on, break through. Come on, break through. You need to break through now. It's time to break through. God, we need your presence. the very presence of God from our life. There's not one of us here today, including myself, that has not gone through the motions. Oh, we know what to say. We know when to say it. We know who to avoid. We know how to act in church. We know when to show up and when to leave. We look like David's palace on the outside. We look like we have it all together.
But my brothers and my sisters, let's not fall into the same trap as Abinadab. He had the very thing that everyone wanted. But because he did not know how to host the Holy Ghost, just be real and authentic about it. Be honest about your struggles. and Keep a repentant heart before God. And tell God, I'm sorry, Lord. Every day, Lord, I repent in Jesus' name. Show me these areas. I'm going to tell you right now, God will show you. I pray clean hands over this congregation, God. I pray clean hands, God. Spiritually speaking, clean hands. But hands are but a symbol of a clean heart. I pray clean hearts, God. This fresh wind week shows up, God. We don't want to come into fresh wind with, with, with just toxic hearts. Oh, lay it out today. Lay it out before him. It's okay. Yeah. Just release it and surrender it. Have your way to all that's left to say is holy. You are holy. Lift up those hands. We it's okay. Holy. It's okay. We cry. Revival messages. Remember, revival is not manipulated by man. Revival is not a trend, although I know it's trending right now. It's not a hashtag revival. Just because you put a hashtag in front of revival doesn't make it revival. You know what the stamp of revival is? I got one word for you. Repentance. And then it just kind of breaks off. But the moment this church stops taking a posture of repentance is the day it may cease to go on in life and look back and say, oh, there's something missing. Oh, my God, I'm not going to live like that no more. I'm not going to pastor this church like that. I'm not going to allow us to move forward like that. Hey, in the Old Testament, the Bible says that when the pillar of cloud moved, then Israel moved. At night, it turned into a pillar of fire. And whenever that pillar of fire rested or moved, then they moved. 
that cloud and that pillar represented the presence of God. And the moment they stopped coming out from under that and doing things on their own is the day they begin to lose battles. And they begin to, they were a mess. And Moses, Moses tells God, he says, God, I'll go. In other words, I'll go talk to Pharaoh. And I'll take the people into the promised land. But I will not go if your presence doesn't go with us. And the Lord says, that's not a problem. I don't think that's going to be a problem. If I can just get, if he can just get our okay, yeah, and the Lord says, half your worries are over. And I'll pour out my presence upon you. Remember, he's omnipresent. That means he's everywhere at the same time. But listen to me. Listen to me. There are certain places where God will manifest his presence in. And he only goes where he's welcome. He only goes where he's, you know, he'll show up on you. Yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll show up in some pretty dark places. Trust me. I would not be here if he did not show up in a dark place for me. But you know what attracted him? Was my desperate heart. I got desperate. And I said, God, if you could get me out of this thing, I'll serve you forever. He said, ooh, yeah. See that? So don't think you could just live your life the way you want to live it. And you can just go out there and party and drink and do all that. And God's going to just keep getting you out of stuff. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> I don't. I don't endorse that. <laughs> However, if you find yourself in a dark place, even those of you who are watching, you might even be in a dark place right now, watching, tuning in. All you need to do is cry out to him. You just say, God, I repent. Help me. And he will come in. He will lead. He's leading this church, guys. I'm telling you right now. He's leading us. I can't see it all. I can't sit here and lie to you and say, I see every little detail of it. I don't. If we just stay close to him. And I want to lead you into a prayer. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today, and I'm asking you to forgive me of all my sins. for not being a good host of your presence. Help me to be like Obed-Edom who was excited, who was joyful, who hosted your presence well. Help me quicken me to do the same. And I surrender my life to you today in Jesus' name. Father, I pray right now, God, for all my brothers and sisters, again, even my, my family, that's friends that are watching online, I lift up this congregation, God, we are bringing back the ark. We are bringing back the ark. We are people of your presence. And we are bringing you back here. Father, we thank you and love you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Someone say tonight. Tonight at 6 p.m., branded by fire prayer. Listen, don't let that scare you off. Come and be a part, even if you're a fly on the wall. Come out tonight and let's do some praying. Let's do some preparing. Follow us on social media for all the targets and all the fasting this week. Listen, we love you. God bless you. We'll see you tonight and also Wednesday night for our midweek service. God bless you.